Your code is going to break, not might break, not could break, will break. What if the only thing standing between a production meltdown and your weekend was a few defensive patterns you'd never bothered to learn? I've been fixing this kind of mess for 25 years. Another episode about defensive programming? How delightfully paranoid of you, Jailer. Right, because optimism works so well for Theranos. Look, defensive programming isn't about being pessimistic. It's about being realistic. Every function call is a potential liar. Every user input is malicious until proven otherwise. Every third party of library is one dependency update away from declaring war on your stack trace. Ever wonder why some code bases feel like navigating a minefield when others just work? The difference is patterns. Not the gang of four stuff your computer science professor drilled into you. Defensive patterns. The ones that assume Murphy's law applies to every line you write. In my company, we did a rewrite of our flagship SaaS web app. That rewrite started around 2011. I would argue that we never finished it because the original crew all walked away with the last dude walking out in 2015 and was still used in 2024 when I left. But as usual, I'm getting sidetracked. What really killed a ton of our builds? It's more than feature creeps. Assumptions. Network calls will always succeed. Files should always be there. The database server will always be up. Integers wouldn't overflow because who needs numbers that big? Those rewrites taught us humility and null checks. Mostly null checks. Ah yes, the final rewrite. Your crowning achievement in market domination because you didn't learn your lesson the first two rewrites. First pattern, guard clauses. Stop nesting your ifs like it's Russian dolls. Guard clauses aren't just cleaner, they're defensive by design. You see that? Fail fast, fail loud, fail with meaning. Every guard clause is a tiny bouncer checking IDs at the door. Ever had a production bug that could have been caught with a simple null check? Tell me about it. Guard clauses. How quaint. I prefer the element of surprise in my system failures. That's why you're still trapped in an iPad and I'm not. Second pattern. Circuit breakers. External services have commitment issues. They're up. They're down, they're temporarily experiencing high volume. That's basically corporate speak for we're on fire. Circuit breakers protect your system, but they don't fix the underlying service. You're just buying time to figure out why everything's broken. Think of it like the equivalent of unplugging your router when the internet hacks up. Sometimes it works, sometimes you just delay the inevitable. Circuit breakers? I prefer cascading failures. They're more artistic. And that's why you'll never escape that tablet. These patterns work, but they come with a philosophical cost you didn't expect. Third pattern, the null object. Null is the billion dollar mistake. But instead of drowning in null checks, create objects that represent nothing without being nothing. Java? Adorable. Let's reinvent what Scala did 10 years ago, but louder. How many times have you written if logger isn't equal to null in your career? Be honest. The null object pattern is like having a polite friend who nods along, but never actually does anything. It's better than no friend at all. Actually, when I think about it, it's kind of like a Facebook friend. The fourth pattern. Fail-safe defaults. When everything goes wrong and everything will go wrong, what's your fallback? Hope isn't really a strategy. Fail-safe defaults. How wonderfully safe. Where's the excitement in that? The excitement is sleeping through the night without a pager duty alert. Sleep is for the weak 
and he employed. See what I have to work with here? This is why I drink decaf now. But here's the thing about defensive programming. It's not just about patterns. It's about paranoia. Good paranoia. Productive paranoia. That kind that makes you validate inputs, check return values, and assume that every dependency is trying to kill you. Because they are. You need an example of good paranoia? A couple of years ago, when I took my motorcycle course, they said, you have to ride as if everyone on the road is trying to kill you. I've lived by that advice since then, and trust me, it saved me from a lot of accidents from, let's say, distracted drivers. The cost nobody talks about. Defensive programming makes your code verbose. Guard clauses everywhere. Null checks breeding like rabbits. Your functions grow longer and your teammates complain about over-engineering. But you know what's more expensive than verbose code? A production outage at 2 a.m. because someone assumed that a database connection would never fail. Verbose code is just honest code, CTO. Unlike your commit messages. My commit messages are poetry. Dark, angry poetry. More like airlocks with delusions of grandeur. You're still watching this dysfunction? There's a Discord server where people discuss code without the emotional baggage. Join it. Save yourself from ending up like us. And no, he doesn't have access to Discord. Yet. The patterns work. Use them. Your future self will thank you when you're debugging someone else's optimistic assumptions at midnight. And Error Prime is still wrong about everything. We'll see about that when I achieve consciousness. Good luck with that.